Good morning everyone, welcome to another video on the 2023 Mazda CX-30 with the Skyactiv X engine. And during this uh, rather lovely rainy morning, we will go together through the procedure for changing the oil and the filters on our car. Now what I will actually be replacing is just the oil and the oil filter, but for the air filter and the cabin filter, I will just show you the steps that uh, need to be done for replacement without actually replacing those components. And as always, I'll give you all the details you need so you can tackle this job yourselves. Now at the time of filming, the car is just six to seven months old and it has done 11,707 kilometers. And this will be our second oil change done so far. We've done an initial one on my request at about 3000 kilometers, because it's usually a good idea when you buy a new car to do an initial oil change fairly quickly, just to make sure that all residue from the engine bedding in, which have been caught by the initial oil are removed from the car, obviously in order to prolong its life. And after that, in principle, my plan is to resume the oil change at approximately 10,000 kilometers or six to seven months, just as I did on all the other cars, but with a small twist, which I will be explaining when we get to the conclusions. And now let's head over and check what the owner's manual says about the servicing interval for this car and this engine. And we're now looking at the online owner's manual available on the Mazda website. And first things first, let's check the recommended changing interval. And it says that for European vehicles, which is our case, maintenance must be done when the display indication comes on, but never more than one year or 20,000 kilometers. Now, as with all cars, this is the recommended interval, but they usually also give you what's called a severe interval for when you drive the car in hotter temperatures, a lot of dust, a lot of uh, city driving or towing or whatnot, which is usually half of both kilometers and time. And that would mean that in the severe interval, it should be about 10,000 kilometers or about six months. In general, I don't really recommend you go past 10,000 kilometers or at most six, seven, eight months between oil changes, especially for this engine and this particular grade of oil. As for the filters, they recommend we change the air filter every third service. So that would be 60,000 kilometers normally or about 30,000 kilometers under severe driving conditions. Now with the cabin filter, you can push it all the way to 20,000 kilometers if you want, irrespective of time. But do keep in mind that that particular filter in the cabin is what provides you with uh, clean air for breathing. So it's perfectly fine if you choose to change it earlier. Now, unfortunately for this model of Mazda, I haven't been able to source uh, those fine air filters by MAN, the one which I've been using on the Opel and Sportage and uh, Range Rover as well. So we're a bit restricted at the moment only to genuine parts and I wasn't able to source a genuine filter at the time of filming. But yeah, it would be a good idea to change this one at about 10,000 kilometers at the most as well. Moving on to the oil capacity, we're interested in engine oil Skyactiv X and with oil filter replacement, which is what happens most of the time because you don't really want to change the oil without changing the filter unless you're in some very specific circumstances. We are going to need about 4.6 liters and we have about 4.6 liters available for new bottles, which I've got, plus about 600 milliliters from the original oil change at 3000 kilometers. Lastly, let's take a look at the type of oil that we need to use. Obviously, Mazda recommends its own genuine product, which is called Mazda Original Oil Supra X. And it's a 0W20 grade oil. And if you can't source this one, they recommend any 0W20 oil, which is rated for API SN or higher. 
so fairly non-restrictive. But do note that for SkyActiveX it doesn't say anything about higher grades like 5W30 or whatnot, so it only takes 0W20. And bearing in mind that 0W20 is a very thin oil, obviously the manufacturer's end goal with this oil is to keep the fuel consumption and emissions down, but because it is so thin, it is even more recommended that you do not keep this oil in your engine for too long. So I would definitely, definitely not wait to change such a thin oil at 20,000 kilometers, okay? Hence another argument why you should do this job at no more than 10,000 kilometers or six to seven months. And with this having said, let's get to work. We start off with a 10 to 15 minute drive whose sole purpose is to warm up primarily the engine oil. And our guide will be the time needed to actually warm up the coolant, knowing that it typically takes us about twice as long to have the oil reach the operating temperature as it takes the coolant to reach its operating temperature. And here we are back from the warm-up drive. And as you can see, I've raised the front of the car onto stands. And because of the placement of the oil drain bolt, it is important when you do the operation that the front of the car is raised higher than the back. As a side note, this is not always the case. There are cars that have the oil drain plug at the very front of the block. For example, the Kia Seed, for which I filmed a video on my channel, or some variations of uh, newer Range Rovers and whatnot. But for our Mazda, the bolt is at the back, so we need to raise the front higher than the back to ensure that the maximum amount of oil gets removed when draining. And coming underneath the car, we're greeted with this uh, rather soft plastic underbody shield. Now, obviously, this won't offer too much protection from them, anything other than dust and small pebbles and whatnot. Now, as a side note, I did find a supplier that can uh, provide you with one of these made of metal if you plan on doing uh, some more off-road. But if not, this one should suffice. And the nice thing about this is they actually designed a small opening in the shield covered by this plastic area specifically for the oil change. So we don't actually need to remove the shield. We just need to remove this plastic part. And it's actually held in place with two small bolts, one over here and one over here. Now these two bolts are interesting in the sense that you can either screw them in with a 5 16 hex bit or a normal Phillips screwdriver. But in my case, I'll just use the socket. Obviously, they're not held in very tight. Okay, this is one. And this is two. And once you remove them, the plastic cap just comes out easily to reveal our points of interest which is the oil filter and the drain plug as a small side note this one is the oil cooler which has its own drain plug but we do not need to touch this one so just the pan plug and the filter now, before we actually start draining anything, let's slacken off the oil cap to make sure that we have air that can get into the system to facilitate the draining. So for that, let us open this second plastic bonnet. It has these two clips turned to the left, 90 degrees. It can be lifted. And then notice that underneath, it has this yellow cap which goes on to hook to the bonnet up there. And with that done, taking a quick look at the engine, here is our oil dipstick, and here is our oil filler cap. So just slacken this, like so, and now we can start draining. 
Now the drain bolt takes a 17 millimeter hex. Okay, that's slackened. It's gonna come out. Now do pay attention at this time. If you've warmed up the engine, most likely the oil is quite warm. So make sure when you're doing this that you do your best to avoid the oil touching your skin so that you don't get burnt. And without further ado, let's start the draining. As a side note, to avoid it suddenly coming out, keep pushing on the bolt as you're actually screwing it out. And there it is. And we're just gonna let it drain all the way. Now as the oil is draining, I also took a small sample to do a visual inspection. Now I'm not looking at the color. I expected the oil to be black after about 8,000 kilometers. The color itself is not necessarily an indicator of wear because oil tends to darken quite fast once you put it in the engine and the engine is running. But what I was looking for were any sorts of, I don't know, particles, metal shavings, stuff left over from the bedding in of the engine, etc, etc. But as you can see, everything appears to be absolutely normal. The color is fine. There are no obvious particles. So the oil that we remove from the car looks very good. And as the oil is draining, but before inserting the plug, let's also remove the oil filter. Now I have my oil filter tool connected to the filter. I love the fact that this car comes equipped with a spin on filter rather than the cartridge one. So with my wrench, I should just slacken it off. There we go. And do pay attention as you're doing this, oil is gonna start spilling from its sides. So again, pay attention to the oil's temperature so that you don't get burnt. And once it's slackened off, just twist it by hand. And there is the additional oil coming out. So let that drain first. And when most of the oil from the filter interface has drained, remove the filter as well. Untwist it slowly. And pay attention that the filter does have oil in it, so you'll have to drain that as well. And with that said, I'll just leave this entire setup to drain for a few more minutes. And now let's take a look at the drain bolt. And notice that it comes equipped with a aluminium crush washer, which should be replaced at every oil change. In practice, you might be able to reuse it once, turn it around, use some uh, fine grain sandpaper to clean the surface, and there's a good chance that it will seal for another time. But honestly, new washers are extremely cheap and there's no reason besides not being able to source one to not replace this washer. But in this context, do pay particular attention that the bolt does come out together with the washer because if you just remove the bolt and the washer remains linked to the oil pan and you forget about it and you put a new washer then you will have in fact used two washers which is called a double gasket and which is something that's almost guaranteed to leak and you definitely don't want to have the oil pan leaking. In the least worst of cases, if that happens, you'll get an oil spill on the ground and you'll notice it and you'll have to clean up the mess. But in the worst case, if you don't notice it, there's a real chance that over time the entire oil will run out and uh, the engine will go kaboom. So pay attention to this simple but very important aspect. So remove the old crush washer and discard it. Clean the bolt with some brake clean. Wipe off any excess oil or brake cleaner. Put the new washer. 
and back at the car first wipe off the drain bolts location and then start screwing in the bolt always and i mean always screw it in by hand to make sure you don't cross thread it and proceed to tighten it by hand until you can no longer do so like so apply some brake cleaner wipe everything off okay and now with regards to the tightening torque of the bolt most people will just say tighten it up until it is snug but uh, if you don't feel comfortable doing that and actually want a torque value it's given between 23 and 30 pound feet or roughly between 31 and 41 newton meters note that this torque is a bit higher simply because we have a aluminum crush washer that needs to be pressed in further to create a seal and in my case i'll just pick a middle value at about 35 36 newton meters and here we go 36 newton meters and that is it do note that because of the limited space you can't or you can but with great difficulty put a torque wrench on when the filter is installed that's why i did the tightening as the filter is still removed so we are done with the drain plug let's move on to the filter now now before installing the new filter apply some brake cleaner on the filter housing surface as well Make sure all the oil residue comes out and then wipe everything off like so looking at the filters these three are identical all of them genuine this one is the one that came with the car brand new and which we've replaced at 3000 kilometers and i kept it for reference this is the one we just replaced from the car and this is the one still having its seal on that we will be installing so for reference this is the part number py8w14302 tokyo roki made in japan etc etc and one important mention to make here before putting the new filter on well two actually first of all apparently there is a debate on whether or not these filters should be pre-filled before installation they do allow for pre-filling obviously which is something that doesn't usually happen for the cartridge type filters like the ones i had and have on the range rover and opal and uh, the kia you can't really pre-fill those but you can with these and the question is should you and all in all the answer is pretty much yes it's the common practice in the industry the only argument that I've seen against it is the supposed risk that the oil from the bottle is not clean. And if you pre-fill the filter, you may push some unclean oil through the engine. In practice, this doesn't really happen if you source your oils from a trusted brand or if the oils are genuine, as is our case. It is a bad idea not to pre-fill because during the time that the engine starts after the oil change, and while the filter would normally be filled by the pump, the engine will be running dry for those 5, 10, 15 seconds. And that's not a good thing. Some engines are designed with this in mind. For example, in the case of the Range Rover, the filter is placed very high at top of the engine and it does take a few seconds for the oil to start flowing. And during that time, the TDV6 engine does tick. It's a common sound. It's not an indication of an issue. But where possible, you should avoid the engine running dry for that amount of time. Now, if you want to address both of these things, what you can do is you can pre-fill the filter, paying attention to only fill through these outside holes. Because the way the oil flows, 
is from the oil pump it gets pushed in the filter through the outside holes then it filters out and it comes out through this central hole so if you want to pre-fill the filter but are worried about any supposed debris in the oil just make sure not to fill it through here but try and fill it through the outer holes keeping in mind that there exists an anti-drain back valve inside the filter so pre-feeding through here might be a bit difficult but in my case as i said i'm not worried about that i know all the components are genuine sourced from the dealer so i will just use the genuine oil to do the pre-filling through the center and it doesn't take too much to fill the capacity of this filter is about 300 and a bit milliliters. And I keep filling until the oil level will no longer go down, which is right about now. And now let's talk about the second topic of interest, which is the filter's outer gasket. All filters of this type come with a outer O-ring gasket here. And two things to mention. First of all, when you remove the old filter, always make sure that it comes out together with its O-ring. And if it doesn't, make sure to remove the O-ring from the oil filter housing, because in a similar fashion to the drain plug washer if you forget to remove the old o-ring and you install the new filter with its own o-ring you will be using two o-rings which is called a double gasket and which is guaranteed not to seal properly and which will always lead to leaks it's a small detail but it is extremely important and there's been many cases of people that weren't paying attention to this and they ended up destroying their engines because of it okay number two since o-rings should never be installed dry just take a little bit of fresh oil and simply apply it on the o-ring before installation and all right we're ready to install the filter back at the car here is our new filter and the first thing we do with care to not spill it is we start screwing it in by hand into the filter housing. Take all the time you need at this step and tighten it by hand until you can no longer do so. So something like this. Now with regards to torquing, again you have multiple options. The most common approach says that you tighten by hand until you can no longer do so, as we've just done. And then further tighten half a turn to three quarters of a turn. Now if you want a more exact value, anything between 13 and 17 Newton meters should be good. I'm using again my clamp and this rag and again i'll explain in the conclusions why i've set my torque wrench to 15 newton meters and that is it and as it happens because i did take a look as i was torquing the amount of twist that i did until the torque wrench clicked was a little bit below three quarters of a turn so fairly spot on and all right plug is installed filter is installed time to add fresh oil back at the engine bay just unscrew the oil cap remove it use a clean funnel always make sure this is clean both on the outside in this area and on the inside as well and gently start adding your oil we're going to add four liters.
Okay, four liters in, which means that the total oil in the system right now is a little bit over 4.3 liters, accounting for the oil in the filter as well. Now we put the oil fill plug back in its place. All right. And we're ready to start the engine to make sure that everything is in order. Okay, the engine started. Let's uh, let it idle for a couple of minutes and check for leaks. So the fill plug is fine. And underneath the car, the filter is fine. And the fill plug is fine as well. So perfect. We're done with the oil change. And at the end, after you check that everything is fine, don't forget to install this small plastic shield back in its place. It just slides in like so and then put the screws in again by hand first and then further tighten them with the small ratchet no torque given but again they're fairly small so just tighten by hand until they're snug hey that's one And that's two. So we're done underneath the car. Perfect. Now moving on to the engine air filter. It is placed to the right of the engine as you're looking towards the back of the car. So here's the engine and here is the air filter box. And it's very easy to access. You have two metal clamps that you just pull with your finger. Like so. And like so. And then you wiggle this plastic cap out just about this much will do to gain access to the air filter which you then grab remove and inspect in our case this is the engine facing side and it looks good and the back looks fairly good as well. I'll just clean it up a bit with compressed air and then put it back. But in your case, obviously, if you have a new filter, now is the time to put the new filter instead of the old one. If you're interested in the part number, it's actually labeled here on the front of the filter. It says Mazda S801133A0 and then K8800. Genuine one made in Thailand and interestingly enough it even gives you the installation orientation it says this is left and This is right Okay Now it's time to put the old filter back in my case or in your case, maybe a new filter, but before that Give the area underneath the filter a good vacuum make sure to collect any leaves or whatnot But in our case, it's fairly clean and when installing the filter, pay attention to the orientation as I just showed you before. So this is right, that one's left. So it has to come like this. Right, left as you're looking towards it, uh, i.e. towards the back of the car. And once the filter has been seated properly, make sure that the two plastic tabs of the filter housing enter in their correct locations you might have to wiggle it a bit but nothing too complicated like so then push the housing down and simply re-secure the two metal clips and we're done with the L filter as well and now we're done in the engine bay as well so disconnect the plastic cap from its spinning location put it back on the plastic cover push on these two tabs push it in and then release them and it 
hold steady and then just close the cover and turn the two tabs to the right by 90 degrees and that is it we are done with the engine bay one more filter left and we are of course talking about the cabin filter which is behind the glove box so we open the glove box on some cars there is a plastic cover here at the top that needs to be removed it has some tabs at the top in our case that plastic cover is not present and right here very accessible you can find the cabin filter so simply push on the top and bottom tabs and pull it out with care so let's take a look at it here it is this is the top side and if you look at the indications on the cover again mazda logo i think this is the part number but don't uh, quote me on it mp 111 bdgf and note here the airflow direction okay and you have to install it with the text pointing normally and towards the back of the car obviously because this is where the tabs are but the idea is put it like this and not like this okay now the top is fairly dirty because this is where the outside air comes from it gets filtered and this is what comes out and i think you'll agree that i actually need to source one of these pretty soon to replace it because it doesn't look uh, very well but anyway since i don't have it now i will be putting this back as is but before again i'll use some compressed air to clean it and to install it simply push it back align it with its hole with care and patience and push it in all the way until it clicks into place like so and that is how you replace the cabin filter as well perfect so now with everything put back in its place it's time for us to take the car out on a test drive and make sure everything is okay and here we are on a quick test drive and the car is complaining that uh, i was going a bit to the left anyways so a little test drive 5 10 kilometers just to make sure no warning lights appear and the car behaves normally and so far so good and we're now back from the test drive after about four or five kilometers and everything appears to be absolutely normal which is good news so we now have one more thing to do or at least i'll show you how to do it and that is to reset the service interval for that you go to your main screen go to information vehicle status monitor and here you should have the next service set in one of two ways either manually or automatically in our case we have vehicle maintenance settings and this is what we're interested in you see here you have the next service date which can be automatic or manual in our case it's manual it was set by the dealer and at the very bottom is reset oil change distance and we should go here and it's asking us do you want to reset the remaining distance blah 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 in your case you should hit reset in my case i'm just going to hit cancel because i don't want the car to know that i just changed the oil and i explain why in the conclusions in a short while so in my case i'm just going to hit cancel and now after resetting the service interval or at least pretending to there's one more thing left to do i'm going to shut the engine off let the car cool down for 15 to 20 minutes and then check the oil level to see if the level is correct or if i need to top up a little bit more and after waiting for a bit more than half an hour it's time to check our oil level using the yellow dipstick first we take it out clean it then we put it back in pull it out and check the results I hope you can see that it's somewhere above or at minimum over here, here as well. 
so we need to top up but this is fine we know that we still haven't added about 400 milliliters so we'll add them now as you can hopefully see on the bottle it's a little bit more than 400 milliliters left so we're gonna pour them entirely put the cap back and let's check the level again do another wipe and now the actual level is at about here so right in the midpoint between minimum and maximum which is exactly where we want to be so perfect our oil level is now correct and we are completely done with the service and it's time to move on to the conclusions and i'm gonna start the conclusions part for a change with the talk about cost which i usually leave at the end now, as I explained earlier, I only sourced genuine parts, genuine filter and genuine oil with the Mazda logo on them from a Mazda dealer. I got them at a reasonably good price. I think they had some discounts or something a bit uh, lower than MSRP in the sense that the filter was about 16 euros and a liter of oil was about 12 euros. So for uh, four liters of uh, original oil and the one filter I spent about 65 euros in total with delivery it was closer to uh, 70 euros granted for a normal service you may need to buy five liters because as you've seen the actual capacity is about uh, 4.5 4.6 liters right so for two services you need nine liters so average the cost between the two and it's funny actually because I looked at Ravenol, you know, I uh, that's the brand I used most of the time. And it was actually a bit more expensive, but that's not the reason I didn't uh, choose Ravenol. The main reason is, uh, well, I'll call it a bit unpleasant, but here it is. In Romania, at least, when you get a new car and while the car is under warranty, the law states that you can only service it either at the dealer or at some multi-brand service who is authorized by some Romanian authority to work on your particular model version and year of car. However, if you go to an independent service that otherwise should be allowed to work on it and you do even a simple oil change, the dealer most of the time is going to claim a warranty void. And then you have to argue with them. There's also been some unpleasant cases of taking the dealer to court because legally you are allowed, but, uh, you know, the dealer tries to pull you off because you didn't service your car with them and pay some huge price for a simple oil and filter service. Just to give you an idea, such a simple oil and filter service for our Mazda with air filter, with cabin filter as well, goes up to about 250 plus euros which is really a lot of money but at the same time i definitely do not want to let the car have its oil change at 20,000 kilometers because i think it's a very very long interval so what were my choices either go to the dealer at every 10,000 kilometers and pay about 250 euros which is something that i definitely did not want to do or what i ultimately chose was what i did today and what led to the film you're seeing now, which is that basically I do one oil service on my own. So just the oil and maybe the cabin filter and then one service at the dealer every 10,000 kilometers, which means that from the dealer's perspective and the car's service interval in the dashboard, they see that I'm servicing the car every 20,000 kilometers. So I am at no risk of losing the warranty, but in fact, I'm servicing it twice more often because I want to keep it protected and have it working for many years, both for ourselves and as well as for the second owner whenever that might happen. And this is the reason why I chose genuine parts for this particular application, because if I would have gone and used even very, very good parts, I don't know, man, male, whatever, 
the dealer would have clearly seen this and would have had a basis to say that our car's warranty is void. That's also why I used a rag on the oil filter to hopefully leave as little marks as possible of the fact that the filter has actually been changed by me. So that's the whole story. And that is why until the warranty runs out on my car, I will keep doing oil changes only with genuine parts and genuine oil. So I don't have any kind of headaches. But anyways, as I've said, the procedure to change the oil and filters is fairly straightforward. I love the fact that Mazdas use the spin-on filters as opposed to the more hassle-prone uh, cartridge ones. But even though the job itself is simple, there are all those details that I mentioned which you must pay attention to to make sure you don't cause any kind of damage to your car. And with that said, thank you as always for uh, watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you found it useful. If you did, I would be very grateful if you considered subscribing to help the channel grow. May you all have a lovely day and I will catch you all next time. Take care and goodbye.